go. Hey guys, this is Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric for my EV guy. This is going to be September almost of 2022. It's on the new uh, Ford Lightning truck. Uh, we've been installing electrical plugs here uh, since some of the first Teslas on Highlands Ranch I installed 16 years ago. A lot of people get it mixed up that it's a dryer plug. It's not. It's a range plug. It's four wire. It's a NEMA uh, 1450. Uh, it doesn't have to look like a plug installed in a wall. It can be surface mounted as well. The key thing is it's a level two charging. If you have the plug-in adapter, it's about 32 amps, so you might want to have it breakered at 40 amp. Either which way, if it plugs in, you have to GFI protect it according to Article 625 and 210.8. Um, anything above that charging is going to be hardwired. It still has to be GFI protected, but it's the manufacturer's responsibility typically to get that in for your Tesla capsule or your Ford Lightning capsule. Now, I did just do a third party for um, uh, Electrify or um, Electrify the Home. I can't remember the name of that, but uh, they basically are a company that is GFI protecting that at a level two inside of it, which is third party. It looks like the Juice Box, Cripple Creek, or Point Charger or Siemens, and those are all good, but those ones actually do not have GFI protection. So we have to buy it at 30, 40, or 50 amp two pole. Um, the other thing is, how do you know you can actually do that on your house? Some houses here in Loveland are 70 and 100 amp. Uh, they don't even have main breakers outside. They only have a meter. I do suggest a service upgrade to do that. It does cost a quite a bit. You cannot, in Loveland, if you Loveland Power is your provider, you cannot just upsize your power above 100 amp if you're overhead service. You have to go underground now. Um, if you're going to be Excel or REA, United Power or Fort Collins Power, you have to find out from them um, if we're allowed to stay above ground. And if you're already underground, then we have to find out if it's sleeve that they can repull it or you got to trench it. So it's not as easy as you think to make your house an electric gas station. Typically, if you're 125 amp, you're going to be okay in a level two charging. Assuming at night, though, in the summer, seven, eight months out of the year, Colorado's hotter if your AC is kicking on and competing with it or your refrigerators or your attic fan as well. If you're charging two cars, you're just going to have to transition, wake up in the night and go out and plug in the other one. But typically trying to plug two at once, you're going to need 100 amps, 200 amps, excuse me, on that house. So I'll show you real quick how this worked out. We have a um, GFI protected because we're gonna plug this in. This is a surface mount plug that we fished in. And then we have an 80 amp protected that's coming out for an EV. The capsule's coming out in about two months. So we just cap this off for now. We're gonna mount it. And yes, we have to surface mount that because the wire's thick as a number four TC cable. Otherwise, you're gonna use an eight or six gauge to typically wire up your car depending on the ampacity and then you also have to know the main breaker size. So let's go out and look at that. So this main breaker size is 150 amp. This is an all-in-one cabinet from 20 some years ago, but it's a meter disconnect. Some people don't even have a disconnect and they just have the meter. Nowadays, according to code in our, uh, two years ago, 230.85, you have to have a main disconnect outside. If you touch it, you got to get a permit, and then you have to upgrade a whole bunch of items and put a different box. So it can trigger a lot of issues buying an electric car for you. That, or, I mean, if you're going to try to buy one, you have to be able to know what you're dealing with. And this gentleman did take a picture far back like I asked and close up so I could see at 150 amp main at some two-odd aluminum. Um, I felt that he's going to be okay to charge either the 80 or the 50. Now, could he possibly charge both at the same time? He could, and that's going to cause an issue. Um, we're still going to be under because cars only charge at about 32 amp on one of them and 70 at the other. So he's still going to have about, oh, another 33 to 28% left on that main breaker. If that was 125 amp, I probably wouldn't have put them both in because it is tempting for someone to come in and plug that. But if he moves away from this house, somebody else has to have a Ford Lightning capsule. Otherwise, to sell it, he's going to have to cap it and put a box there. So keep in mind, guys, your main breaker load is very important. If you have to have a service upgrade, then we have to deal with that permit and utilities again. Um, so again, take a picture far back, close up of the panel, maybe take the cover off and